Behind me is a brilliantly painted red and orange sunset over the world famous Joshua Tree National Park. My name is Eric Conover, and this is what to do when traveling to California, part three. I am here in the beautiful state of California in partnership with Visit California and My Way, nearing the end of a two week long road trip with my good friend, Mike Sheffer. My mission in this three part video series is simple. Show you the top destinations to experience on the ultimate road trip through the great state of California, starting here in Temecula. Temecula is known as the hidden gem wine country of SoCal, centrally located from all SoCal major cities with over 40 wineries in the valley. One of the biggest differences from Sonoma Valley up north and Temecula is that in Temecula, you can actually stay in the vineyards. Right behind me is a wine vineyard. You turn this way, that's my hotel room. Vineyard, hotel, you are right in the middle of the action. Whereas in Sonoma, you have the vineyards and then the hotels are separate in the main town a few miles outside of the vineyards. Aside from all the incredible wine, my number one thing to do in Temecula is go for a sunrise hot air balloon ride. You. It's one of the most majestic means of transportation with a peaceful hot air balloon ride over the rolling hills and lush vineyards of the Temecula Valley. The beautiful estates sprawling below and the incredible scenery with a sunrise flight, which are available year round. And a balloon ride is hands down the best way to get a bird's eye view of the region. So we just left Temecula early in the morning, driving the RV to Palm Springs. Now Palm Springs fascinates me. It's a sea of green walled off by massive mountains surrounded by arid desert. There is nothing for miles. Palm Springs has this sort of strange nostalgic feeling for me. The hotel we're staying at looks like something out of a Wes Anderson film. Every room is a different color. You got the yellows, you got the greens, you got the reds, the pinks, the blues, palm trees, morning cup of joe at sunrise. Known for its stylish mid-century architecture, hotels, golf courses, and of course, beautiful sunny skies. With actually just over 300 sunny days per year. Palm Springs truly is an oasis in the middle of the desert. And if fancy hotels and swimming pools aren't your thing, you can always head up here to the top of this mountain. San Jacinto Peak shoots up from the Coachella Valley floor to just shy of 11,000 feet above sea level. And the quickest way to get near the peak is on the Palm Springs Aerial Tramway, which is also the largest rotating aerial tramway in the entire world. There's still an additional 2,000 feet to the very top of the summit, which is right over that way, but the tram will take you to just about 8,000 feet. At the top of the tram, it's a good 40 degrees cooler than down in the city. So right now it's about 60 degrees, whereas down in the valley, it's right above 100 degrees. Looking over to the east, you see Palm Springs, all the cities down there in the valley. You even see the windmill farm over there, way off in the distance. Highly recommend if you are in Palm Springs, take the tram up and just enjoy nature. If you wanna go for a hike, head on off that way to the peak of the mountain, or if you just wanna hang out and enjoy the beauty points, head over this way to the platform and just take in the beautiful views. From way up here, you can get a crystal clear view of the San Andreas Fault Zone. We met up with our friend Phil, who is an actual living legend, and took a red Jeep tour outside the city limits into an active earthquake fault system where the North American and Pacific plates meet through a labyrinth of geological cuts and canyons stretching for miles and miles as far as the eye can see. So we're just pulling over the Jeep in Horseshoe Canyon. Now we're right outside of Palm Spring. I mean, we're talking how many miles? Maybe about 15, 20 miles from Palm Springs. We're basically in the middle of the San Andreas Fault Zone, all right, which runs from about the Salton Sea, heads west, then it makes a big turn, heads up towards San Francisco, around San Francisco on its way to Japan. We have 100 earthquakes a week in this area. We don't feel virtually any of them at all, but it's really, really special place in the country. What looks like a solid rock is actually just easily broken into powder. This is what's called fault gouge. Everything in these canyons is basically fault gouge, so it looks like you're driving through these hard, solid, granite-looking canyons, but actually it's all just dust. 
The Greater Palm Springs region was pretty much built solely upon master irrigation, as a massive underwater aquifer fuels the region, bringing life to the area, supporting just about everything. We stopped at the source of this water, a palm oasis, seemingly appearing out of nowhere. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, water flowing right down. This water comes from rain runoff as well as from the aquifer. It comes right up from the aquifer. Just several miles away from downtown Palm Springs, we're out here in the Coachella Valley. What a beautiful place this is. So if you want to get out of the city and just escape into the desert, this is your man. Desert Adventures Red Jeep Tours. From Palm Springs, we packed up the RV and drove out into the desert. I mean way out into the desert. As we arrived at the final stop of this California road trip in Joshua Tree National Park. Just about seven o'clock in the morning here in Joshua Tree. Sun is rising right behind us. Just for a second, just listen. It is absolutely quiet in the desert in the morning. Not a single sound. The National Park is a vast protected area in Southern California, characterized by rugged rock formations and stark desert landscapes, named for the region's twisted, bristled Joshua trees. Our house on wheels right here. But I was saying, these rocks, look how crazy that rock formation is behind the RV. About to actually head out of the National Park and into the town to grab some coffee, some breakfast. The actual town of Joshua Tree is quaint, with tons of restaurants and coffee shops. The best way to see Joshua Tree, in my opinion, is by RV. Ooh. Wow. Welcome to our home on wheels. As it is a massive area of land to cover. I like being in the desert. It's quiet, it's warm, but it's also cool at night. It's peaceful. It's a good place to sort of press that reset button and just feel centered. The best times of the day are early in the morning or late in the evening when the sun sinks low and the temps begin to cool off. And at night, with hardly any artificial lights, you can see the arm of the Milky Way galaxy with your naked eye. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more high quality travel films, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And with that, I will see you in the next video.